Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel, String Things by Mel. My name is Melissa. I'm a stay-at-home mom living in Vancouver, Canada. Knitting is my hobby and so that's the focus of all the content on my channel. I do a knitting podcast that follows the fairly typical format once a month. And in between, I do review videos, vlogs, kind of whatever fits my schedule um, as a stay-at-home parent. Today, we're going to play a little game of this or that. And I say it like it's a well-established game. I don't know if it is, but that's what I'm going with. So I thought it might be a little fun, a little interesting to bring you in my decision process of choosing my next cast on. Um, whether I cast this on today, tomorrow, I don't know. But I am looking to add one more V-neck cata uh, category. Wow. One more V-neck cardigan to my wardrobe. Um, I'm not saying that like it's going to be my final V-neck, but um, it's definitely something I want um, in the immediate future. And I've narrowed it down to two patterns, which are very similar, um, but do have some key differences. Uh, between the two. So full disclosure, I have purchased both of these patterns, but I'm going to be discussing some information that is available to everyone who can access Ravelry or these designers' websites. I will not be saying anything that's actually in the patterns themselves because I don't believe in sharing details um, from paid um, patterns. Um, also, I pretty much made my decision about which cardigan I want to cast on before purchasing the patterns. Um, it's just kind of some bonus information I'm going to let you in on that doesn't disclose the design details. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. So the two patterns I have to compare today is the Semper from Sophie, who goes by the Knit Pearl Girl and the cocktail, which is from Marie Christine or uh, Trico Designs. Now, I've only done, I think, one other pattern from uh, the Knit Pearl Girl. I have not done any of um, Marie Christine's patterns before, um, but I came across of it, uh, her designs recently, I really like it. Also, she's based in Canada, which is also nice to support a fellow Canadian. So both of these patterns happen to have been released earlier this month, maybe within even days of each other. Um, and they both use or recommend Sanus Garn yarn, and they're both ended up in very similar, if not the same uh, color. So this is really almost comparing apples to apples. Like this is very close, like different kinds of apples is what we are um, discussing today. I have my tablet, so I will share my screen um, just to make it easier to chat about these two things. But let's get into um, the facts about these patterns. What is kind of similar um, about them? I got to turn on my share screen thing here. All right, so both the Semper and Cocktail have noted down um, DK weight, or in the case of the Semper, fingering plus fingering, so holding two strands of Sunday yarn, for example, to create DK. Um, and like with the Cocktail, even though it says DK, you could hold two strands of fingering um, pretty easily. The gauge is very similar between the two. The Semper has 21 stitches by 28 rows and the Cocktail has 20 stitches by 28 rows. And both of them are on 4.5 millimeter or US size 7 needles, um, which I think is a great size needle, which is my favorite size is 4 millimeters, but 4.5 is still good and it still makes progress feel like it's um, it still makes you feel like there's progress when you're knitting this up, especially since this is a cardigan and going to be knitting back and forth. Um, didn't want to do a fingering weight uh, cardigan, but also don't want to do a worsted or Aran weight because I don't want this to be too bulky on me. So let's get into the sizing. Um, so the cocktail. So 
Okay, so both of these are, are also top-down constructed um, v-neck cardigans as well. So the cocktail pattern, it has nine sizes and that spans from extra small to 5XL. So in actual measurements, the finished garment measurements range from 33 and a quarter to 63 and a half inches or 85 centimeters to 161 centimeters. Now, taking into account the positive ease, uh, this cardigan is recommended uh, ease of one to three inches of positive ease. So that means we're looking at actual busts of say 30 and a quarter to 60 and a half inches. I can't do the math as quickly with centimeters, but I think you guys get it. <laughs> um, and the yarn here is listed as a double Sunday. So I think, yes, do we consider this to be a size inclusive pattern? I believe so. I would like it to see that the bust circumference goes down to 28 inches or what is that? 77 centimeters, something like that. Um, I kind of fall into, not that I'm 28 inch bust, but I often find um, some of the really popular patterns have too much built in positive ease. And even if I make an extra small, it's still too much ease. So really happy to find this pattern um, size inclusive, but also one to three inches of positive ease only. Um, so that's great because I do want this to have more of a tailored fit. So let's, jump over to the Semper from the Knit Pearl Girl and her Ravelry page, her sales page has a lot of information on it and it's, this is same information is also included in the pattern. Um, but it's she's very thorough in terms of providing information. So we got to scroll down a bit. So there are 12 sizes in this pattern. Sophie uses letters, so it goes from size A to L, and that corresponds to an actual finished garment uh, circumference from 33 and a half inches to 63 inches, or 85 centimeters to 160 centimeters. So in terms of the actual bust, um, or chest that that's made for it's from 29 and a half inches all the way up to 61 inches and in centimeters because Sophie's put that in here um, 75 centimeters up to 155 centimeters and the recommended ease for the summer is two to four inches so um, still within you know what I find will achieve like a more tailored fit four inches is a little bit too much for me um i think three is a good like fitted but still functional amount of ease for myself personally um, but yeah good to see uh lots of sizes um and that a chest measurement going down to um 75 centimeters or 29 inches as something i like to see as a slender person now let's get into what makes these two v-necks different so top down semper is a top down reglan construction the cocktail is top down contiguous method now if you are not familiar with the contiguous method it's kind of similar to a reglan in that uh, you work increases at um, particular points and you build the yoke and kind of like your shoulder and sleeves at the same time um, now the location of those increases uh, relative to each other is what creates a different kind of look to it the contiguous method almost looks like a set and sleeve um, but it's not um, for those of you familiar with barbara walker's um, book knitting top down it seems to look similar to her simultaneous set and sleeve um, but is not so or I think it's also called the European shoulder which is used in petite knits poppy tee pattern um, those top-down constructions actually require you to knit up 
you know, a bunch of the yoke first, and then you go back later and pick up stitches to create um, the shoulder cap and then uh, add on the sleeve. Contiguous method, you build it all up all at the same time, just like with um, top down regular construction. And I kind of think that the contiguous method, because of the way it looks like a set in sleeve, for me, visually, it looks like a more like tailored, formal fit. Um, Reiklin, I always kind of associate with kind of sporty, um, athletic, not necessarily meaning like you're going to do sports in this, um, but there's a kind of a sense of mobility that you get from um, a Reiklin that you don't necessarily get from like a set and sleeve contiguous method. Um, sleeve because you think of you know like button up blouses and things like that all the kind of formal attire always generally have set in sleeves um, fun fact the Raglan construction came up because um, Fitzroy Somerset I believe is the name uh, lost an arm in the Battle of Waterloo and needed a way to stay mobile and use his non-dominant arm to still wave his sword around or his gun i don't know when was battle of waterloo but anyways that's where the regular construction uh comes from <laughs> um the next thing that is different between the stumper and the cocktail is the button band so the button band on the semper is something that is picked up afterwards and i believe it's a two by two rib um, stitch pattern and also has afterthought button holes. You could totally do the buttonholes while you're knitting it up if you're kind of not sure about afterthought buttonholes. I've never done them before uh, but they look pretty neat and you just need a um, little crochet hook. Uh, so for this one Sophie has referenced um, an Instagram reel to show you how to do the afterthought buttonholes. Um, I recommend actually going into that person's Instagram bio and she's got a link to a YouTube video and that gives you more of an explanation and also how to finish like weave in your ends um, for those buttonholes. So that would be my recommendation there. Um, and that is kind of knowledge I'm passing on from the paint pattern, but that doesn't affect um, Sophia's design numbers and all that. So that's why I'm saying it. Um, so the cocktail pattern the button band is knit at the same time and it uses like a knit pearl knit pearl knit um, stitch pattern and so the buttonholes are done as you go so you do need to have a good idea what size buttons you're going to ultimately get and how far apart you want them to be so you kind of need to know what length uh, you're going to knit up this cardigan. So pros and cons uh, between these two button bands. Sophie's is kind of a little bit more beginner friendly wool proof in that you can just knit it up, worry about button size, um, a number of buttons later. Um, the pro of knitting the button band as you go is that you don't have to go back later and pick up the button band. It's just done and you don't have to worry about um special pickup ratios or anything like that you know sometimes you go to pick up a button band and it's too many stitches or not enough stitches so yes um that would be a pro of knitting as you go um so what else do we have uh going on here so i think they both use that orange feeling um that color from santa scarn actually nope so the Semper is knit in the shade Poppy, um, but the cocktail is knit in that orange feeling, if I am correct. Yeah, so with this V-neck cardigan, I'm also feeling like, um, oh, let me stop the screen recording because I don't think I need that anymore. <laughs> um, I'm feeling the oranges, I'm feeling the reds, the tomato soup core that's from Emily of High Fiber Knits is just popping up in my feed everywhere and I generally don't gravitate toward reds but this kind of orangey red is enticing. Um, so enticing that I've already selected my yarn. 
Um, <laughs> so I was on the online shop website for Art of Yarn, which is a shop in Kelowna. I have cited uh, this shop many times before. It is a shop in Kelowna, BC, which is very close to my hometown of Vernon. So that's also one of the reasons why I like to support them. They also have a really good selection of yarns and notions and accessories and sadness garden booklets if you're interested in those. And I have yet to actually step into the shop in person. Um, one of these days I will, um, but for now, online shopping does a trick. And they had some Sunday yarn on sale. So I purchased this yarn before even deciding which pattern I was going to choose. Um, but all the yardage estimates are on the Ravelry page. So I kind of went off that. Um, Art of Yarn was having a sale or is having a sale on some Sunday yarn that they've labeled as going to be discontinued. Whether that means Sandus Garn is discontinuing these colors or the shop is discontinuing. I kind of have a feeling it's the former, but uh, they had a color called Brick um, in there. And I, it's showing up pretty true on camera right now. And I kind of just, based on the somewhat a little bit low res picture online, I decided to just go with it. Um, and I'm really happy I, I did. I was hesitant because it looked a little bit more red, um, like less orange red online, but I was looking up different images, um, just from Google images and I was satisfied enough to take a chance and I'm glad I did, um, because it is a really nice orangey red. It really does look like tomato soup to me which it's funny and Emily was saying that she kind of said that as a joke and how it's just like social media is funny, isn't it? Um, but I think this orangey red color is flattering on me. I've learned to kind of embrace the yellow and kind of golden undertones in my skin. I used to not like anything remotely yellowish. Like if I got white, it had to be a bright white. If it was red, it could not be an orange red. And, you know, thankfully I have switched and just learned that, you know, I don't, I can still wear something that looks white, but if it's a little bit warm, like that's actually more flattering with my skin tone and just kind of embrace my Asian skin, guys. Um... But yeah, I think this is still really flattering uh, for me and still gives off um, some like red vibes, but not too Christmassy because that is, if particular reds are too Christmassy for me and then I have trouble wearing them outside of the winter season. Um, I'm hoping this is something that I can wear on cool um, like spring days, maybe even cool summer days if it's not heat in the weather. Um, but just as a comparison for anyone curious, I do happen to have the colorway rust from Sunday. Um, I will show you to compare. And so rust is definitely more of a darker or dark copper, but you know, still looks, still looks good on its own. I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do with this. This is one of those things that I bought on sale. I bought all the stock I could, which was only four balls of it and don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> um, this one I bought eight balls of it. I will hold it double and we'll make either the, usually I think it's the smallest size in the cocktail or the second small size in the semper. Um, that was kind of the yardage estimates I was going off of. So for me personally, um, which one am I going to choose? Which one do you think I'm going to choose? <laughs> so I've said that I'm looking for more of a tailored fit. This is something that I'm hoping to wear um, maybe more so going out. Hi, Tiberius. You can grace us with your presence. Um, yeah, going out 
still fit over dresses, although I do not know which dress this would go over. I also don't wear that many dresses um, or skirts, really. I have them, but I don't feel that comfortable in them all the time. Um, would love to wear this with, you know, jeans, whether that's white, black, or blue, um, black trousers. That's really kind of all the bottoms that I wear, um, whether they're kind of fitted, whether loose. So versatile in that sense, in terms of matching with different bottoms. I will probably opt to make this not quite a cropped length, but something a little bit above where my hip bones actually are. So a little bit closer to my natural waist because I find that a bit more flattering. I also wear high-waisted pants. So, um, that plays into my decision on length. Um, yeah, so I'll just tell you what I've decided to go with and run through kind of why. So I have decided to choose the cocktail cardigan. So this is by no means saying like, I think the Semper is not a good pattern to follow or anything like that. Like I have not made it. Um, yes, I have purchased both patterns, so I have been able to access and look at them, but it's not that. It's all about my personal style and what I think is going to fit better in my wardrobe and something that I'm going to actually um, wear more often and use, you know, like for going out because that's what I feel like I'm lacking a bit. I don't go anywhere fancy, uh, but I want something slightly more formal than um, a boxy Raglan cardigan, which is what I think the Semper sort of looks like in comparison to the cocktail with the continued contiguous method um, sleeve i think that's going to bring in a nice close fit um, tailored fit around the shoulder and in the armhole um, not that you can't get um, a really good fit with the raglan sophie's pattern does have compound raglan shaping and so that means various rates of increasing to create um, that armhole but there's just something that you know an almost set in sleeve look like that construction in my mind just says tailor fit more formal i mean i'm wearing a set in sleeve right now um yeah and i also like the button band better on the cocktail just it looks a bit cleaner if I made the Semper, I'd probably sub in uh, a double knit band um, because I don't, the two by two rib, I find it's still, um, it's too casual for my purpose of cardigan, but I'm really curious about the afterthought buttholes. I wonder if I can use that in the cocktail pattern. I might experiment with that in my swatch. Um, yeah, I'm thinking in my swatch, I will include um, the button band and see if I can do that because I am concerned about which length I ultimately want, um, which then affects how far apart all the buttons will be. I do want to choose smaller buttons, so both the patterns use um, small buttons. I don't know if they're as small as 10 millimeters, but I'm pretty sure they're no larger than 15 millimeters. And that's perfect because that's also plays into having something slightly more formal. I find smaller buttons are more formal than large buttons. Um, yeah, and I'm also curious just to try a pattern from another designer and also using contiguous method on a cardigan because I have done it on a V-neck um, top, the Valentie from um, Camille de Coteau, which is the top I wore to Flock Fiber Festival. Um, so yeah, that is a little bit of all kind of my logic and decision process for choosing the cocktail cardigan. Um, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Next is swatching. Um, maybe I'll get into that today, I'm not sure. Let me know if you liked this uh, kind of video. This is kind of like a new thing, but this is something I do kind of regularly. Uh, I put a lot of thought into choosing what to knit next. I really do try to think ahead of what's going to 
fit in my wardrobe? Am I going to wear it in the next year, next five years? Um, my husband is the same. Uh, <laughs> if we both sometimes take forever uh, to choose things because we like have to look at every single detail and think of all the different ways something can be used or not used what does it go with so that involves knowing what's in our wardrobe which also means not having too many pieces in our wardrobe because how do you remember everything in your wardrobe if you have too many but anyways let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video um and maybe it's something i'll consider doing again um but um till the next one guys Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one. Happy knitting. Bye.